right, everybody, welcome back to Risen Sun Adventure. As you can see here on the table, uh, we've got a project that we're fixing to start. And on the last video, you noticed I did say we were going to redo this GT drive, turn it into a 180 drive. Um, I'll be traveling out to Santee Cooper in the next week. That is a lake that is full of stumps. So you definitely need another drive just in case you're out there and you um, have an oops and you break your drive. And I know there's guys out there with Hobies and, and everybody's out there and they'll help you out. But um, it's, it's just a nice thing and peace of mind to know that you've got your own drive. I got the parts um, in. We've got the clevis pins that we're going to need in order to put in the new drive. We have the mass. This right here is the new 180 drive that we'll open up in a moment. But the first thing you do guys is you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some electrical tape and in a moment. We'll show you what you're going to need that for. You're going to need a 7 16 wrench in order to take off your cables. And then you're going to need a 9 16 to take off the main arms. And then you'll need a screwdriver to take off your idler pulley. And pretty much guys, that's about it to do this entire drive. The biggest thing you want to make sure when you pull out the, the pin is you want to make sure that you take your tape, wrap it around the inside, and I'll show you that when we get to it. You want to be careful with the bearings. This has got some roller bearings in it. There's 15 roller bearings to this whole thing. So if you're missing one, you need to start looking uh, because that is a very important thing to do when you take this drive off. So while you got the drive off, go ahead and clean up the parts, re-grease everything, take it back to brand new. Also, you're going to need a Sharpie. What you're going to do with this Sharpie, and I've already done one of these, is you're going to, the drive comes with a, it's kind of like a flat notch knuckle on where the chain goes. So take your, your marker and you want to mark that center link. So when you go to put this onto the new drive, you know that's where that link needs to be in order for it to be centered. So that's already done. So let's go ahead and take this. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna take these nuts off. And if you if you look, make sure that you just kind of look right here and you kind of get an, an eye of how far these come through so you'll know how tight. All All right guys, so once you get these these out, you're gonna take off your first arm, which will be this one right here. And like I said, you can, you can start looking and you can look in here and you can watch and these are gonna actually come out. You can actually reach in here behind it and kind of push it in so you can keep them up in there. But they're gonna, they're gonna, out. If you can keep them up in there, that's great. You can see right there they all are, and that's what they look like. And you're going to have those on each side. So what you want to do is once you get that done, we're going to set this off to the side. You don't have to take the idler cable out from this one here because it'll just come right off with it. There is no faster or easy way to do this because of the, the area that it's in. The best thing to do is do like I'm doing, to get you a box wrench and just start working it until you can get it off with your finger. And take your screwdriver, stick it in the back side here, kind of work that out because it'll be tight. And if you can't get it out that way, then you just kind of Right out there. Same 
this side. Once again, as you're removing this off, remember bearing. You're just kind of reach in there and work your way around the shaft. And you can sit here and watch as you push them back up in there. Put your hand over top of them, just kind of mosey the whole thing out. And there they are. Right in there like that. They're not going to fall out from pushing them this way because there's actually a lip in there that catches them on this side. They're going to come out from this back side if they come out at all. And what we're going to do once we get all this put out, we'll take us together. We're going to re-grease these. This is the best time to do your maintenance on your drive, especially when you're um, you're changing it over. All right, guys. After you get your your arms off and you take your chains out, remember when I did with the magic marker right there is the centerpiece when you put in this new spine these gears like I said have one link that is squared off that's where that link is going to go to make everything centered up and work properly so our next thing we're going to do uh, we've got the uh, arms taken off we've got the chains removed so once you get um, the chains and everything off and you've got your arms off the idler pulley is the next thing that we're going to remove. Um, it has got a shaft inside of it and it's also got bearings in it. So guys, be careful with that and you need to re-grease this once you get it taken out. But you're going to have to use an Allen key to take out this Allen screw. And you're going to use that Allen screw on the next spine. So you make sure you keep that. Let me just stick that over here. We'll even keep the thing inside of it. Then you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to push out that piece. Put it over top of the table because, like I said, it's got the bearings, the same roller bearings in it as the other. The reason they have it with the screw head in it is because it is notched. You can see here where it's notched. When you stick it back in, that notch needs to be facing where that Allen screw came out because that Allen screw is gonna hold that in place. So we will slowly pull that pin out. And we're gonna slowly remove there. And like I said, guys, there's your, your bearings. Everything's intact there. So, got it right there. We got this key here. Put that there. And now, all you have left is your spine. And then you have this pin right here that's got to come out. So, in order to get this out, in order to make it work properly, everything has to go back in your new drive center. So, what you're going to do. This is where the tape comes in effect. You're going to take some tape. You don't need much of it. And you're going to wrap it on one side of the shaft. And what that's doing is making a marker. So when you slide this into the other spine, it'll all be like it's supposed to be. Cut. All right guys, in order to take this pin out, uh, you do not want to hit it with a metal hammer. You, you want to use some type of block of wood or you want to use a rubber mallet. And it shouldn't take a lot of force. I mean, it should just take a couple taps and it should be, it should come out. But you know, Newton's law that should and could are two different things. It's moving, but it's Solid. 
once you get it past these little pieces here you're pretty much good to go and like I said guys make sure you put your tape on it because that's going to go back in there and that's going to line up inside the new drive all right well that's it that's everything you need to do to remove the parts from the GT drive to install on the new 180 drive hold on a minute and we will get the 180 drive spine out and we will reverse all the process put it all back together I'm gonna go clean up the um, parts and then I'll show you how to how I re grease them and then we will get back to you in a moment all right guys um, like I said once we got everything taken apart we want to clean it up real good uh, this is the first side that we're going to clean and as you can see I cleaned it up I got all the old stuff off of it this in here didn't have any grease in it at all I mean it was pretty much dry so I have refilled everything with grease as you can see here and then like I said you've got 15 of these bearings and you're going to just take them and just start sticking them in and like I said remember it won't go all the way through because you've got a lip down there so you put your first one in slide your second one in and just proceed on actually take that sharpie that you had before fit it right down in the middle and it will help to seat all of those in place so now all your bearings are back in place greased up lubed up ready to roll You'll do the next one the same way. All right, guys, we've already got our drives and stuff redone. We've got the bearings back in them. We've got the grease in it, and now it's time to look at the new drive. Uh, when I purchased this, I did not purchase the forward and reverse handles for the drive because I got the drive mainly for a backup. So if something was to go wrong with mine, I would just transfer those parts over to the new drive. So. Let's open it up and see what we got. As you can see, it comes with, this is the, the V2 drive. And you already have your feet and everything for it. Um, you have to buy the mast for it. Um, I have those here. Uh, this is your reverse and all you got to do now guys is just transfer everything over and we will do that. Good. All right guys we pretty much uh, beat the crap out of this thing. I mean it, like I said even even lubed up it don't go in there easy. Uh, it is a tight fit and it's probably a tight fit because by God they don't want the damn thing to come out. But um, there has to be a beep in there on that one. 
Yeah, guys, uh, remember the tape? The tape was put in so you know where you go to. And like I said, there it is. So, good to go. All right, we'll go on to the next step. Now uh, that we've got the, the main pin in for the, uh, for the pedals, we're going to start assembling this bad boy back together. Remember we got the, the idler pulley and we're going to put it in here like this. The bearings go back towards this side and you're going to take your pin. Tap it because it is it's tight fit in there. And like I said, I, I greased everything up really well, so you're gonna have grease popping out of this booger. But that's okay. And then you want to take your screwdriver, make sure that your your flat side is facing towards you and I'm going to take this here which is your allen screw Guys, this is a good grease. It's a, um, it's like a race car grease. It doesn't break down um, in water. It's waterproof too, and it's also high heat. So, I use a top quality grease when you do this. Um, either use a marine grease or something that's not going to break down with a lot with with water, because these things do take a lot of beating, and they do um, see a lot of water. All right, let's go on to our next step. All right guys, once we get the idler pulley put on, then we're gonna put the arms back on. And you're gonna take the idler cable, come across the idler pulley, around the bottom half here, and you're gonna go into here, and you're gonna tighten this back up. I told you when we first started to make sure that you kind of remember how many threads you had out. I kind of give you an idea on what you're looking for as far as tightness. We all like it tight. Makes for a better ride.
As you can see, what we've done is we went ahead and we put the chain back on and that little black mark, you make sure that you have it on the, the flat notch on the, the new drive. Um, it's not as, I mean, it's not as, it wasn't as easy for me to get it done. Um, you want to make sure that your idler pulley and everything are tightened up, kind of semi, because that actually keeps everything from slipping off. So we've got the we've got the first side done. We've got the idler pulley in. We got it all greased up. We've got the chain on, and then once you once you get the chain on, you start looking at the the drive, and you want to make sure that it is when these things here are together, everything should be straight. So you go back in and you start tightening up until this right here is actually straight. So we're going to put the the other chain on. And like I said, it's real easy once you have everything marked. Like I said, there's the center of the chain. So you come over here to, to this part. And if you look right here, if you look right there, that one right there is different from all of the rest of them. This one's got a flat mark on it. So you're going to take that mark that you made on the chain and you're going to center it onto the drive just like that. Then everything else will be into place. So we're going to take it, turn it around, make sure everything's bent back the way it's supposed to be. But right there is the center. So you're going to come through here and push your, your pin in. It's difficult too because you can get your hands in there. Go ahead and start your nut. That's what she said. Such a little space to work in on, on that area. But once you get it in there, it's pretty, pretty easy. Then you want to go to the other side. And you want to do the same thing. What I said earlier, make sure that you pay attention to uh, take a picture of it or uh, to make sure how far the nuts come out. So if you come up here and you look, you've got it flat, you've got everything pushed together. And you want to make sure these right here are the same, and then you just want to start uh, tightening everything up. Get tight there. little bit on each side. See how it's starting to move over to the right. Come over here. Tighten this one down a little bit. It's probably
probably see it moving. down the main tube of it. It's starting to look pretty pretty decent. It's starting to, to see where the where they were. And guys when you go out um, make sure to take a wrench and quarter turn each one of your your nuts just to make sure because you don't want to be out there on the water and lose one. And there you go guys, that's pretty much it. Um, everything is done and you just kind of wipe up your grease. You have taken a GT drive and turned it into a 180 drive. Take two on the mast. All right, guys. Once you get the the drive all assembled and everything put together, and then it's time to put the Fins on and the mast. So what you want to do? I went ahead and went ahead and lubed this up. Just put a little bit of um, WD-40 inside of it. And then you want to tighten this up by hand first. You want to get it seated. That way you're not um, cross-threading. Same as here. And guys, when you do order the mast, make sure that you order the mast that are for the V2 turbo fins. Or the fins that you're going to get. And just give it a quarter turn, tighten it in there, make sure it's good and stuff. Uh, sometimes they give you, um, I know sometimes in the kids they'll give you the red Loctite. Uh, I do not recommend you putting red Loctite on these things. If you're going to put any type of Loctite, use the blue. It's easier to break loose. If you use the red, you're going to have a problem. So once you get your fins on or your mast, You'll take your fin and you'll slide it up onto the drive. And you take the back one and you'll slide it up. So once you get this done, this does not come with these pins. These pins are separate. Uh, they do not come even with the, the drive itself. Um, you can order them from Obi, I'm sure um, that you're going to pay for the, the five dollars and shipping that you always pay for. So I looked up the specs on them, and these pins are three sixteenths by seven eighths pins. And what you need is the three sixteenths seven eighths clevis pin with a hole on one side, and it will fit inside <coughs> of the drive. So once you've put your um, mast on and you've tightened them up. Then you want to take, make sure you get the turbo fins, the V2, and you'll slide them up onto the mast. And then it, it, it does not come with the pins needed to fit the um, drive to the mast or to the fins. So you have to buy this, this one little, this little clevis pin. Um, it is a 3 16th by 7 8 and you will use the the keepers off of the old drive and you will use those as a thread through and it keeps them on. So then you take your clevis pin, push it through, it's going to fit through there and then you will take your 
in here and you'll slide it through and you'll lock it in place and that's it guys um, make sure that you uh, tune into the channel and you uh, like and subscribe and that's how you t take a GT and turn it into a 180 drive all right guys once you get your clevis pins in um, we got I'm gonna go ahead and say it I mean go ahead and let you know um, I was told to get the the 3 16th by 7 8 and when you stick them in this drive it is actually sh too short so you're actually going to need probably a 3 16th by about one inch in order for it to go through you know and I'll go pick those up tomorrow at the um, hardware store but uh, just to show you that the drive does work uh, I went ahead and uh, put some zip ties in there just to show you how the fins are on and you can see it's greased up works like a charm let's see here we and now you're back in reverse and you're on forward again so guys um pick you one up uh, take your old GT drive, turn it into a 180 drive, and you're back on the water if you have a 180 drive rated fish. Guys, thank you for stopping by the channel. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button. Look out for the videos coming up from Santee Cooper when we're out there trying to catch some big ones. See you on the next one.